instead of having another carb heavy dessert, I decided to make an after dinner dessert coffee. I'll show you a few different methods to make this delicious treat, but we'll do it like in Italy. Dessert first. If I want just one quick cup, I use the espresso maker. I've not always had one and I still manage to make a great cup of java. I use whole beans and grind them fresh and about two tablespoons per cup of half and half. With my espresso maker steamer, I add half and half, butter, and a few drops of peppermint. Add your freshly brewed coffee, and we just made a peppermint melter. All the holiday flavors without the guilt. <laughs> you don't need an espresso maker to make this. Using freshly brewed coffee, warm some half and half, butter, and your peppermint. And use your frother. If you don't have a frother, you can do it this way as well. Who doesn't have egg beaters? Mmm, minty. Prosciutto wrap diver scallops. These are fast, simple, and delicious. First, we'll melt some butter on a low heat. Add about a tablespoon or so of chopped garlic, and you'll let that heat for about two minutes. We're not looking to cook the garlic, but rather infuse the flavor in the butter. Set it aside and let it cool. Add about one teaspoon of chopped fresh basil. Pour it over the scallops. Let it marinate for about 10 minutes. Heat a cast iron skillet. You're looking for a medium high heat, and I'm only adding three at a time, not to overcrowd the surface. We'll sear them for about 90 seconds a side. Then we'll wrap with prosciutto, put the seam side down, and bake 350 degrees, seven to eight minutes. It's best to make these last, as you'll want to eat them freshly cooked. Bon appetit. Mock prime rib chuck roast. This take on the original recipe is an amazing way to bring a different dimension and pep up the already delicious roast. This roast tastes like you were eating prime rib without paying the hefty price. I even show you how to make a clean, easy, creamy horseradish sauce. We'll start by taking some leaves of the rosemary and chopping them. Not too big and not too small. Next, we'll chop our garlic. Smashing the cloves beforehand makes it easy for peeling and chopping. The back of a pan or pot is an effective smashing method too. Now let's salt the roast, both sides. Preheat the oven to 350 degrees. With a cast iron pan on the burner, slowly bring up the temp. With a hot pan, sear all sides of the roast. This roast is just over three pounds. Thickness, fat content, and overall weight affect the cook time. Adjust accordingly to avoid over and undercooked meat. And don't be afraid to check the tenderness during cooking, several times if need be. Turn off the heat and let the pan cool for a few minutes before adding the water. Slowly add the water, about three cups. Now, make it rain. Put it in the oven for approximately two and a half to three hours. I always check after about an hour and a half. Sometimes it may need a little more water or it could be cooking faster. Just look at that. Absolute perfection. Manja. You know you want some of that jus. And now for the most difficult recipe. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm gonna make some creamy horseradish sauce. Take about three quarters of a cup of sour cream, roughly one tablespoon of prepared horseradish, more or less to taste, a pinch of salt and some cracked black pepper. Give it a nice stir and let it sit for about an hour. Done. Garlic, parsley and Parmesan cloud biscuits. We avoided a near catastrophic event early on at the first go, but my fast reflexes saved the day. We'll separate our four eggs. 
In our smaller bowl where we put our yolks is two ounces cream cheese, one half teaspoon of dried parsley, and a tablespoon of granulated garlic. Beat the egg whites on high for about a minute, then add your half teaspoon of cream of tartar and beat for another minute or so until you see those stiff peaks. Stay fresh like a Bosch with America's most trusted refrigerators from Bosch. Beat the egg yolks, granulated garlic of cream of tartar and beat for another minute or so until you see those stiff peaks. Beat the egg yolks, granulated garlic, parsley and cream cheese for about a minute or until it's well blended and creamy. No lumps. Gently fold half the yolk mixture into the whites. Add the second half and fold until everything is well incorporated. Now line a baking sheet with parchment paper. Grease well with butter, then add equal amounts of the batter, swirl around, and since the oven was already set at 350 degrees from our chuck roast, they baked at 13 minutes. On medium heat, melt some butter. Then add, you guessed it, garlic. You're just looking to saute for about 90 seconds. After the biscuits are out of the oven, top with the garlic and butter. Add some shaved Parmesan cheese, put back into the oven for about a minute, and then there you have it. Garlicky goodness. Garlic and rosemary prime rib. First, bring the roast to room temperature. This method does not work if you skip this step. This roast is two and a quarter pounds. It's been out for about two hours. If you have a larger roast, say four to five pounds, it will take closer to four hours. Don't worry, it's perfectly safe. Preheat your oven to 500 degrees. Now, slather some room temperature butter with fresh chopped garlic and rosemary. Yes, more garlic and rosemary. It's the dynamic duo of beef. To calculate the cook time, multiply the weight of the roast by five. My roast was 2.18 pounds. Multiplied by five gives me 10 nine. I round it up to 11 minutes. Then I turn the oven off and I let it go. The original recipe calls for a four pound roast, but I had to make adjustments. I pulled this out after an hour 30 and that would have given me more accurate temp and it also takes out the guesswork. Working in a butcher shop has its perks, especially when you have kin that work in the butcher shop as well. Our personal butcher, Little, Little Airy, trimmed, tied, and made this roast absolutely beautiful. But the true test, you really don't know what it looks like until you cut into it. There it is, perfectly pink, so delicious. Now you can do it too. Fall Harvest Oopsie Cake, and it's inspired by Miss Kelly Hogan. And here's what the recipe calls for, but I'll walk you through it. First, let's separate our eight eggs. You'll put the whites in one bowl, and in the other bowl, put the yolks in with the eight ounces of room temperature cream cheese. Next, we add two teaspoons of maple extract. Now, let's shake a little cinnamon, about a teaspoon. Now, make that a teaspoon and a half. Last, we'll add our vanilla, about a half a teaspoon. For our next step, we'll add cream of tartar to the egg whites. We're going to beat the egg whites on high for about four to five minutes. We're looking for some stiff peaks. Now let's mix our cream cheese and the egg yolks together. Next, add half of the egg yolk cream cheese mixture and fold. Now add the second half and continue to gently fold until well incorporated.
Preheat the oven to 300 degrees. Line a baking sheet with parchment paper and grease it well with butter. Add your cake batter, smooth it out, add a little more cinnamon on top, pop it in the oven, and let it go for about 25 to 30 minutes. This smells incredible. Let the cake cool, flip it over onto a board, and remove the parchment paper. Now it's time for the frosting. I used about 20 ounces of heavy whipping cream and it was plenty. Add the cinnamon, beat for about three to four minutes on high until you get a texture that's more like Cool Whip, as Kelly likes to put it. Trim the edges of the cake, have it, frost it, stack it, add a little more frosting, and that's a thing of beauty. You just made an oopsie cake. I highly recommend you make this the night before. Refrigerate it overnight, all the flavors are gonna to come together and make it taste beautifully. And don't forget to enjoy those trimmings. The next recipe is a take on deviled eggs, but I gave them a new name, Heavenly Eggs, all carnivore. This is what you'll need to make Heavenly Eggs. We'll bake five slices of thick cut bacon for about 25 minutes at 350 degrees. The look of determination on this guy's face. He's been by my side all day. Next, we're going to bring some water to a boil, add our eggs, and let it boil for nine minutes. Remove eggs, and let cool. I'm the fastest peeler in the West. Make sure you give your eggs a good rinse. You want to remove any eggshells that may be left behind. Chop our bacon. Have the eggs. Toss the yolks in a bowl. And then we'll add our ingredients. Add some bacon, about a teaspoon of grated Parmesan cheese. bacon. We're going to add approximately three teaspoons of half and half. Add some fresh cracked pepper. Add your favorite mustard and mix well together. Now, of course, you stuff the eggs. Top the eggs with some reserved bacon, a little parsley, and some Parmesan cheese. And voila, you have heavenly eggs. Our next recipe is herbed cloud biscuits. Here are the ingredients, and let me tell you, these are delicious. In our bowl, we have our two ounces of cream cheese, our herbs, half teaspoon of onion powder, and half teaspoon of garlic powder. Separate the four eggs like you did with the oopsie cake. It's been so long since Larry and I have enjoyed some cloud bread. We discovered this recipe about four years ago when we first started keto. Here I use the eggshell to scoop out any broken pieces that made it into the egg whites. And just like with the oopsie cake, we add our half teaspoon of cream of tartar to the egg whites. Beat on high until you start seeing those stiff peaks. Mix the herbs, cream cheese, egg yolks, garlic and onion powder until well mixed. Now it's time to fold the egg yolk mixture in with your egg whites. 
Remember, gently fold. Line a baking sheet with parchment paper. Add equal amounts of the mixture. Give it a nice little swirl. Pop them into a 300 degree oven for about 25 minutes. And oh my goodness, look at that. And this is the star of the show, carnivore turkey gravy. Let's start by pouring the turkey drippings into a measuring cup. There he is, still waiting. Heating up the same pan I roasted the turkey in. Let's loosen up the bottom a little bit. Stir up the drippings, incorporate that fat and all that broth together. Now, let's add all of our other ingredients. Stir it together. Let it heat a little bit. Once you start seeing bubbles, now we'll add the heavy cream. Two and a half cups. Slowly whisk over low heat. This gravy is so easy and so delicious. I might just pour some in a cup and drink it like coffee. Add the Parmesan cheese. Three tablespoons of sour cream. It's not as thick as your standard flour-based gravy, but the flavor is over the moon, over the top, incredible. For the last step, pour it in the gravy boat. I really hope these recipes help keep you on track for the holidays. And if you ended up trying any of these, let me know in the comments how you liked them. Carnivorish Eggnog. Ingredients for this zero added sugar, low carb treat are in the description. To make this easy, delicious recipe, let's start by separating two eggs. Time to get scrambling. With your mixer on high speed, beat the egg whites until they're nice and fluffy. On a low heat setting, add the half and half and heavy cream to a saucepan. We only want to warm the cream, not simmer or boil. Add three tablespoons of butter and stir until it's completely melted. Now let's give it that eggnog flavor. Add nutmeg and cinnamon, vanilla extract and rum extract. Stir it well. Remove from heat and slowly integrate the egg yolk. We're looking to temper the eggs, not scramble them. Time to bring in the fluffy egg whites and give it all a good stir. And now for the hard part. Add the mixture into a container Cover and let it sit in the refrigerator for about one hour. After an hour, remove from the refrigerator and give it a good stir. For an optional finishing touch, we'll make our own whipped cream. Add some vanilla to some heavy whipping cream and beat to desired consistency. This recipe will make four four ounce servings. Pour into some festive glasses. glasses. Add your freshly made whipped cream, top with cinnamon and nutmeg, and voila! carnivorous eggnog. Cheers. Carnivore Eggs Benedict. Perfect for breakfast, brunch, or any time. The ingredients for this masterpiece are in the description. Cube and season your chicken breast. Cook it in butter and then put it in the fridge to cool. Next, let's crush some pork rinds. Now, let's add our cooled chicken breast and add it to the processor. Make sure to remove any hard chunks from the pork rinds. We don't want anybody to chip a tooth. Now let's add pork rinds, chicken breast, and some optional cayenne pepper if you like a little heat. Now, let's take out some aggression on these eggs, beat them well, and add most of the eggs to the pork rind and chicken mixture. Remember, it's easier to add as needed. 
Yep, it was just enough. I decided to add about a teaspoon of poultry seasoning. I'm glad I did. The seasoning lent the mix a nice flavor. After melting some butter in a pan, patty and fry the mixture for about one to two minutes per side over a medium high heat until both sides are a beautiful golden brown. With the pan still hot, warm up that delicious Canadian bacon. Just look at that beautiful texture. Absolutely perfect for the base of our Eggs Benedict. For the hollandaise sauce, we're gonna melt two sticks of butter. Now we'll heat the water to just under a simmer for the poached eggs. Don't forget to add the vinegar. Add the yolks to the blender and some freshly squeezed lemon. When life gives you lemons, make hollandaise. Add the lemon juice, Dijon mustard, and it's time to get melty. Add the butter to a pourable cup. Turn on the blender and we're going to slowly, and I do mean slowly, add the butter. If you've ever made mayonnaise, you know what a process this is. Midway through, we're just gonna scrape the bottom to make sure everything is well incorporated and then return to pouring the butter until it's all in there. Just look at that texture, absolutely perfect. Now that the water is at a perfect temperature, not quite a simmer, create a whirlpool and add the eggs. Cook exactly three minutes to achieve a perfectly runny yolk. Now it's time for assembly. Add the patties, Canadian bacon, get your perfectly poached eggs, and place on top of the Canadian bacon. And for the very last step, add that decadent, delicious, rich, hollandaise sauce. Top with a little cayenne and enjoy. Chicken chips with chicken liver pate. Ingredients and measurements are in the description. Aside from a small amount of shallots, garlic, and seasoning, this is a carnivore appetizer that everyone will love. First, let's start this recipe Slice and cube in pieces small enough to add to the food processor. Add the chicken to the processor, blend on high until it's a nice, fine consistency. Our seasonings consist of a little smoked salt, Himalayan sea salt, and cayenne pepper. Incorporate the seasonings with the chicken meat. Cover a surface with parchment paper and take one third of the chicken mixture and cover the top with plastic wrap. The wrap. Press the meat down and take a rolling pin and roll the meat thin, paper thin. You'll almost want to see through it. Once you've rolled in, remove the plastic wrap and place it on top of a baking sheet. Pop it into a 350 degree oven for 45 minutes. After 15 minutes, flip the meat. You'll do this three to four times to ensure that there is no more moisture and the meat is brown and hard. Remove from the oven and set aside to let it cool. Over a medium, he medium heat, melt two tablespoons of butter. Add your chopped shallots and four pieces of chopped bacon. Saute the bacon and shallots for a few minutes. Add your garlic and then your chicken livers. Now I'll take 10 ounces of butter and add them to the pan. Add some poultry seasoning. Now add roughly two to three tablespoons of heavy cream.
Stir everything together and let it cook for about 10 minutes. Remove from the burner and let it cool for a few minutes. Once it's cooled down a bit, add that delicious mixture to the food processor and blend it well. Give it a good scrape and blend a little longer. You can spoon it into individual ramkins. You'll get about four four ounce ramkins or just put it in one giant bowl. Now it's time to take that cooled, hardened meat sheet and turn it into chips. After you've arranged your chicken chips, add your ramkin to the center of the plate and enjoy this dish warm. Absolutely delightful. You're welcome. I hope you all enjoyed those as much as I enjoyed making them and eating them. <laughs> if you have any questions or any recommendations, leave it in the comments. I always enjoy reading your feedback. Happy holidays, my carnivore family. And until the next time, no sugar, no carbs, and no cheating. Love y'all.